Today's tutorial is a basic um, tutorial on how to calculate Fourier series and also we'll look at some of their properties. So we'll do a couple of uh, exercises involving the calculation of Fourier series and we'll also look at an identity called Parseval's identity and look at some of the ways you can use it. So the first question, what is a Fourier series? Let me just remind you. Suppose I've got a function f which is piecewise continuous and has a piecewise continuous differentiable, uh, a, a derivative. Suppose also that function's periodic with period 2L. A Fourier series is just a series involving cosines and sines. And when you want to calculate a Fourier series, we calculate the coefficients, the a0s, the an's and the bn's. And we do that using integration. Now the big L here is just half the period of my function f. And you can see that I'm integrating here over a special interval, what's known as a symmetric interval from minus L to positive L. Now the good thing about that is sometimes the calculations involved with these integrals can simplify greatly when you have odd or even functions or integrands. Okay, so this is a four, general Fourier series. You, cal you calculate the Fourier series by calculating the coefficients through integration. Now, sometimes you'll see, instead of this a naught here, you'll see a naught on 2. And you won't see the, the sort of 2L down here, you'll just see L. It's the same, the same formula. Okay, so whichever one you use, you'll, you should get the same Fourier series. Alright, so let's look at a basic example and then we'll sort of work our way through. So I'm just going to show you how to calculate a Fourier series first. So we've got a function defined as the absolute value of x on the following interval. Oops, so that's, sorry, that's strictly less than. And the function's periodic with period to pi. So what you want to do is calculate the Fourier series of our function. So what I like to do first is basically just draw, draw a, gra a, a sketch of the graph of my function. Okay, so what I'm going to do is draw the graph on this interval and then use the periodicity. So the absolute value function looks a bit like this. And I guess I'd have an open sort of uh, part there. Now, due to the periodicity, to get the graph over the rest of the real line, what I do is I copy what I've got and I paste. I copy and I paste. So basically I'm just moving the, the existing graph um, 2 pi units to the right, 2 pi units to the left and so on, just repeating that process. So this is something that we looked at in first year here. Okay, so if I put that in I'll actually fill that up now. Okay, not the best drawing, but hopefully you get the idea. And that just continues on. Okay, so from our graph of F, is the graph, is, is there any symmetry? Is, is, graph, is, is the, the function odd or even or neither? Sorry? It's even, right? Because an even function has a reflection in this vertical axis. So if I move, say, x units to the right from the origin and x units to the left from the origin, you should get the same value of the function at those two points. Okay? So f is even. Okay, so we're going to have to apply these formulae here. The first thing, let's calculate big L. Well, big L is just half the period. So this is periodic with period 2 pi. 
So L will be half the period, which is just pi. Okay. Well, um, with an even function, F, some of these calculations are going to cancel out. Let's look at, the, I'm actually going to look at the BNs first because that's the simplest case. If f of x is an even function, sine of x is an odd function. So with, by an odd function I mean what you do is you take the graph, you rotate it 180 degrees and you should get the same graph. So the sine function is an, is an odd function. So even times an odd, what kind of function does that give us? Odd, right. So, I'm just going to um, uh, write this in. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of the BNs first, which is not usually how you do it. But So, when I put in L in here, the pi's will cancel. So, I've got... Even times odd, the product gives you an odd function. Now, if I'm integrating an odd function about a symmetric interval, what, what value will it have? Zero. zero, that's it. So I'm integrating an odd function about a symmetric interval, so it's zero for, for each n. Now, in the exam, you probably don't have to put all this down. All you have to note that, okay, f's even, so all the bn's are zero. I'm just doing it here just to, just to sort of show you why it's true. All right, let's calculate the A sub naught. So we're using this. So this will just be the following. Now, here we're integrating an even function on a symmetric interval. So I'm going to just double the integral and integrate from 0 to pi. Now you can see in this case that, that absolutely um, uh, it simplifies the integrand, the thing I'm, I'm integrating. Because from 0 to pi, my function is just the function x. So I don't need to worry about the absolute value signs. Okay, well this is a reasonably e uh, easy integral to do. You'll get pi on 2. And the last slightly trickier one is to calculate these a sub n. So that's going to be the, the, a trickier part for us. Okay. So. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, now, um, the a sub n is going to be going to be slightly trickier. So let's go back to my formula up here. Okay, so now I've got even times cosine's an even function. So even times even, what's that going to give me? Even. So what I can do is double the integral and integrate fr from 0 to pi and change this. Now remember, from 0 to pi, absolute x is just x, so it simplifies a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do is integrate by parts. So, so this is reasonably common. Can someone shut that door? Oh, I didn't, it, there was no, no, none of our students looking through the door, I thought. Okay, just they're making a bit of noise. Um, okay, so we're integrating by parts. So, integration by parts, I'm going to let u equal x, v prime or v dash equal cosine nx. Now, uh, a good choice uh, for u is always one that 
has a simpler derivative than u itself. So when I differentiate this, I'll get 1. That's a simpler function than x. It's not always going to be correct, uh, but it's a good starting point. So if I integrate cos nx with respect to x to get v, I'll get something like this. Oops, sine nx. Okay, so let's use the integration by parts formula. u times v. Oh, uh, so hang on, so I've got 2 times, 2 on pi times that. Yep, minus the integral of the product of the two things we just thought up. Okay. So now it's just a matter of, firstly when I sub in x equals 0 here, I'm going to get 0. When I sub in x equals pi, I'm going to get something involving n, uh, sorry, sine n pi. Now, what is sine n pi for each, um, say, natural number n? Right, sine n pi is 0 because it just cuts the axes at pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. So everything in here is going to be 0. All I really need to do now is do this final integration over here. So um, when I integrate sine nx, I'm going to get something like cosine. Well, actually, not quite. Negative cosine. And I just have to adjust again by dividing through by this n squared. So when sine goes to negative cosine, this negative sine is going to cancel off. I'm going to get another factor of n down here, and I'll get cosine nx. Okay, so let's sub in and see where we go. So when I sub in 0, it's going to simplify to 1. Okay, now, can I simplify? You weren't standing outside, were you? Oh, okay, all right. Cos n pi. What, what, what does cos n pi simplify to for, say, n um, natural number? Well, yeah, it oscillates between positive 1 and negative 1. If you draw a graph of, of the cosine function, you'll see cos n pi oscillates between positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. So a way of simplifying this... is just the following. Now, what, why do I want to do this? Well, you can see that when n's even, this is going to simplify, and when n's odd, this is also going to simplify. Okay, so when n's even, minus 1 all to the n is going to be positive 1, so the thing in brackets is going to be 0. Uh, hang on, let me... Write that out again. So this is going to be 0 for n even. And then when n's odd, minus 1 to the n is going to be negative 1. So I'm going to get negative 2 in this big bracket. OK. So I've calculated every, all my coefficients now. The, B, the Bn's were all 0. The a naught was pi on 2, and the a n's, well, they're 0 if n's even, and they're this if n's odd. So now we can construct our Fourier series just by using this. So let's do that. So the way I'm going to denote a Fourier series of a function f is just this big S f of x. So in here, my, my a naught was pi on 2. And what I'm going to do, instead of some, uh, all, I mean, all these a naught, uh, sorry, all these b naughts are 0. And what I'm going to do, instead of summing from n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, I know that for all the even values of n, my a naught, my a n's are 0. So I'm only going to sum over the odd 
terms, or the odd, sorry, the odd values of n. Now, you may not like that and go, well, hang on, I want that in a usual summation form. So what we're going to do is just replace n everywhere with some odd value, say 2k minus 1. 2k minus 1 is always odd for every um, natural number k. So this is sort of a more standard summation type format. So I'm going to replace n with 2k minus 1. And there you have it. There's your Fourier series. Any questions so far? It's just integration and a little bit of um, simplification. Some of the integrals are easy. Some of them, like the, a, the ANs there, require a little bit of work. Any questions? OK, well, let's look at um, the next part of the question. It says, choose a suitable value of x and come up with a series involving uh, that converges to pi squared on 8. So there's a little formula associated with the convergence properties of Fourier series. Now, you can see in this um, particular graph, my f is continuous everywhere. Okay, at, all, at, any, at every x point, the function's a continuous function. There's no jumps in the, in the graph. Now, there's a theorem on Fourier series that says at all points of continuity, the Fourier series the value of the Fourier series and the value of the function are the same. Okay? Now, if there was a discontinuity at some point, then the value of the Fourier series is equal to the left hand, the average of the left hand and the right hand limits as you, as you approach the point of interest. But th th this doesn't apply to this particular uh, um, example in the sense that this is continuous for all x points. So let's choose some sort of simple value for x. Now, if I choose x equals 0, cosine of 0 is just going to be 1. So that will actually disappear. And what's the value of my function, my original function f, at x equals 0? It's 0. So what I can do is set x equals 0 in here. So that will disappear. And I know that that's got to equal f of 0, which is just 0. Rearrange, and I'll get something, some series involving pi squared on 8. So note that f, the original function f, is continuous at x equals 0. And by one of the basic theorems of Fourier series, we know that the value of the, well, the Fourier series converges to the value of the function at this point, x equals 0. So let's replace x with 0 in this big series, and then we'll form some sort of relationship here. So, so if x is 0, cosine is just 1. So let's rearrange. First of all, I can take this to the other side and then Put the sum on the one side and all the pi's, etc., on the other. And lo and behold, I'm going to get the following. Okay, so let's just write out the, uh, the few terms of this series and to see what we've got here. Remember, 2k minus 1, all squared, is just the square of odd natural numbers. Okay. So there you go. Now, in first year, we were concerned with, with series like this, but we were really only concerned with whether they converged or diverged. Um, can anyone tell me why, why this series actually converges? Anyone remember from first year? Integral test. Integral test. Right? Or it's a P, it's, essentially, it's a P-series. Where, the, where the, the power p is, is strictly greater than 1. But Fourier series, 
at least in the, from this example, allow us to go one step further. Not only does it converge, we actually have the value that the series converges to. Very powerful. Very powerful. Okay? Very powerful. All right, so I'm going to um, look at Parseval's identity now. So this is 187, and then I'm going to use that to formulate some more information about the problem that we've just, um, just solved. Okay, so a few assumptions. First of all, we're going to assume that the function f is represented by its Fourier series. And in this case, we're assuming that big L's pi, so you get a bit of uh, you know, simplification. And you know, you can, let, let's make the assumption that f is uh, like a piecewise continuous function or um, with a piecewise continuous derivative, something like that. OK, now, Passavall's identity involves the, these sort of coefficients, the sum involving these coefficients and their value. And it, and it sort of relates them with, with um, the integral of f squared. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider f of x all squared, and I'm going to integrate. So essentially, I'm just going to take f and multiply it by its Fourier series. We know that f is represented by its Fourier series, so that's OK. And what I'm going to do is integrate both sides from minus pi to positive pi. So consider, please. Now, so essentially I'm just going to integrate this whole right-hand side. Now, just to keep things a bit simple, you don't have to put this in, but I'm just going to put in a sort of a divide everything by pi. It just simplifies the calculations a little bit. You don't have to do it, OK? Okay, sort of squished it on there. All right, well, let's work with this right-hand side. What I'm going to do is just expand, and I'm going to interchange the summation sign and the integral sign. So essentially, I'm just going to integrate sort of every term. Now, if f's a piecewise continuous function, then that's okay. You can do that. Okay, You can't do it in general, though. So let's just sort of distribute this in and think, let, let's, I'll bring that constant a naught out the front because that has nothing to do with um, um, the integral. So that's going to be my first term. And then if I sort of move the integral sign inside the summation sign I'll get, and rearrange, I'll get something like this. Okay, so this is still in the, in the summation sign here. Okay, sorry for squishing it all in. Okay, so where are we at? Well, does this part look familiar? 
It should. It's almost that, okay, with L equals pi. So this is actually, this part here, is actually 2 times A sub naught. What about this part here? That's A sub n. What about this part here? That's B sub n. Again, just with using these formulae with big L equals pi. Okay? So, so I'm going to get A sub n times A sub n there, which will give me A sub n <coughs> squared. B sub n times B sub n. So what is Parseval's identity? Well, this integral is just equal to the following. Okay, so we'll use that to gather more information about the, the previous problem. Oh, 2A not squared, sorry, you're right, it should be. Yep, so let me just adjust that. 2A sub naught squared. Okay, so what can you do with Parseval's identity? Well, you can come up with some interesting um, series. Let's look at the following, uh, uh, well actually the, the, the example that we looked at before. We had, in the previous example, we had all the B sub n's are 0, A sub naught's pi on 2, and the A sub n was given here. Now when we put it into our series, I, I move to these k's, so think of this in terms of k, A sub naught's pi on 2, and B sub k, uh, A sub k is minus 4 on pi times 1 on 2k minus 1 all squared. So let me, let me show you how we can use this to gather some more information. So from, so this is 188. Our A0 was pi on 2. Our A sub k was minus 4 on pi times 2k minus 1, all squared, and our bk's were all 0. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use this, oh, and, and of course, f of x was just absolute x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate this and use this identity with these values. So, so instead of sort of summing over the n's, I'm going to sum over the k's. So let's have a look and see how that helps us. So we're going to apply Parseval's identity. Alright, so the, so the left hand side of Parseval's identity is just this. If I square absolute, I'll just get x squared. The right hand side is just this, so let's put those in. Now the b sub k's are all zero, so I'm just going to sum over this squared. So if I square that, I'm going to get 16 on pi squared times 2k minus 1, all to the power 4. Okay, so let's integrate the left-hand side. So if I integrate and simplify the left-hand side, I'll get the following. And I'm going to take that 16 on pi squared out the front. So all I need to do now is rearrange, and I've got a, uh, an exact value for the series 
involving 1 on 2k minus 1 all to the power 4. So if I take that to the other side and, and then multiply through by pi squared on 16, I'll get the following. Oops. Okay, so let's just write out some of the terms of this and see what we, what we have here. So 2k, 2k minus 1 is always an odd number, so I'll get 1 plus 1 on 3 to the power 4 plus 1 on 5 to the power 4 plus 1 on 7 to the power 4, blah, 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 blah. blah. That infinite sum is a pi to the power 4 all on 96. So you can see the, the real power now. You, you, you can come up with exact values for series that by other methods can be quite tricky. Okay, they can be quite tricky. So the last thing I'm going to do is formulate a series for the following. An exact value for the series. The sum of 1 on n to the power 4. Okay, so this is just okay, the following. Now, I'm actually going to use this line here to help me out with this. Anybody know how, how I can do this? Does this appear in here? Yes, it does. You can see that term's there, that term's there, you know, that term's going to be over there. So actually what I can do is regroup everything and maybe, maybe come up with an exact value for this. The next question is, does this series actually converge or not? Does it converge? Yes. Yes, why? Yes, that's right. It's a P-series. The power is 4, which is strictly greater than 1. So first year tells us that this series must converge. So, okay, so here's all sort of the odd powers of 4. Let's work on the even powers of... Uh-huh. And I know from the top line here that this is just pi to the power of 4 all on 96. And what is this? Well, let's just write it out. I'm going to replace, say, um, it's just going to be the following. I've got this sort of even, oh, sorry, power of 4 even thing down here, all to the power 4. Can anyone see what I can do to this to actually make it look a little bit like this? Well, I can sort of bring out that 1 on 2 to the power 4. That's just 1 on 16. Yes? Now that series and that series are the same. So I can just take this to the other side, replace k's with n's, and I'll get the following. So I've got sort of, when I move this around, I'm going to get 15 sixteenths times this series is just this. So if I just sort of, uh, this series on its own, I'll get the following. I haven't put all the calculations in there. So there you go. So I didn't use Parseval's identity here at all. I just sort of just used sort of a rearrangement of, of things.